Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, here is part three of Overcoming the Religious Spirit written by Rick Joyner of Morningstar Ministries. And continuing continuing from uh, from part two part two that is why the Lord even gave Jezebel time to repent so in Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 through 21 the biblical Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab and a very religious woman but she was given to false religion false religion the Lord gave her time to repent because the roots of this spirit go so deep that time is required to fully repent and be delivered from it however even though the Lord gave Jezebel time to repent he rebuked the church of, of uh, Thyatira uh, for tolerating her it said in verse 20 of Revelation chapter 2 we can be patient with people who have religious spirits but we must not tolerate their ministry and our midst while we are waiting. If this spirit is not confronted quickly, it will do more damage to the, to the church, our ministries, our families, and our lives than possibly any other assault that we can suffer. Hmm. The Foundation of Guilt Eli, the priest who raised Samuel, is a good biblical example of someone who ministers in a religious spirit founded upon guilt. Eli had so much zeal for the Lord that when he heard that the ark had been captured by the Philistines, he fell over and died. He had spent his life trying to serve the Lord as the high priest. But the very first word given to, to Samuel was one of the most frightening rebukes even in the scriptures uh, for Eli. Uh, for I have told him that I am about to judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew, because his sons brought a curse on themselves, and he did not rebuke them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for the sacrifice or offering forever. I said First Samuel uh, chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Eli's zeal uh, for, uh, for the Lord was based on sacrifices and offerings intended to compensate for, this irresponsi for his irresponsibility as a father. Guilt in our lives can stir us on to great zeal for the Lord, which usually results in the use of our sacrifices and offerings as an attempt to atone for our families. This is an affront to the cross, which alone can atone for our guilt. It's one of my cats. Such zeal will never be acceptable uh, to the Lord, even if we can make sacrifices forever. We should note here that the Lord did not say that Eli's sin uh, cannot be forgiven. And he just said that Eli's attempts to atone for sin by sacrifice and offering would never atone for it. There are multitudes of men and women whose zeal for the Lord is likewise based on an attempt to atone for sin, failure, or irresponsibility in other areas of their lives. But all the sacrifices in the world will not atone for even our smallest failure. Even the attempt to, to try is an insult to the cross of Jesus, uh, which alone is an acceptable sacrifice for sin. The attempt to gain God's approval by our own sacrifice opens the door wide for a religious spirit because our service is not based on the blood of Jesus and the power of the cross but on an attempt to make our own atonement for sin this does not imply that we should do, not do things to please the Lord but we must keep our motive to be pleasing and the Lord for his joy not for our acceptance once again this does not imply that we should not do things to please the Lord but we must keep as our motive to be pleasing the Lord for his joy not our acceptance one is God-centered the other is self-centered 
and that of the most that and that of the most destructive kind an attempt to circumvent the cross mm. it is also noteworthy that one of the sins of Eli's sons uh, was that they despised the offering of the Lord as said in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 17 they appropriated the sacrifices and offerings brought to the Lord for their own selfish use those who are gripped by this form of a religious spirit will often be the most zealous to preach the cross but herein is the perversion it emphasizes their cross more than the cross of Jesus their delight really is more in self-abasement than in the cross of Christ which alone makes us righteous and acceptable to God and that concludes part three of uh, overcoming the religious spirit written by Rick Joyner of Morningstar Ministries.